everybody. I just got off the water. It was my friend Harry's birthday, and every year on Harry's birthday, we fish for salmon. So this year, we trolled around for a little while in the river. That wasn't panning out so well, so we took advantage of some really nice seas, headed out over the bar, and when we got out there for about an hour, I was absolutely on fire. I just couldn't keep them off the line, and it was a ton of fun. So now, I've got some great fresh fish, and it's time to head back to the valley. So while I'm driving to the valley, check out how we did out there, and when we get back, I'm gonna cook up something fantastic with this fresh salmon. Good heavy one. <laughs> yeah. All right. I can't reach it. I'm going around. It's a big one. <laughs> hit right there you finally got your rod out that's my second rod I'm doing all right <laughs> yeah. somebody's gonna have to net it be aggressive keep it out of the motor too keep it out of the motor there you go on that turn What is it? Is it another mackerel? It's a little guy. Oh, it's a little jack. Small mouth? No. Looks like a trout. Footer. Oh yeah! Fish. That is a chunky one. <laughs> Did you see the fish take it though? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's freaking 
freaking awesome, dude. Oh, whoa, look out. Oh, that's a classic coho roll right there. Phenomenal. Splash <laughs> right there. Yeah. Damn. He's going past the boat. Where are we at? He's passing the boat. There we go. Yeah, big one. That's a big, big one. Yep. Yeah. That's another monster coho. I didn't set the hook on him or anything. He's coming back. There we go. Fish on, baby. <laughs> That's 12 feet. Heavy one. Heavy tuna. Heavy tuna. Nobody step on me. He's taking line. Nobody step on Russell. Okay, buddy. It's a big one. It's a big one. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, it looks like a shrimp. No, it's coho. Another huge coho. Ready? Oh. <laughs> Watch my motor! Watch my motor! That's... <laughs> Are you talking to me or the fish? <laughs> Are you oh, you're fish a little bit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Well, that was a ton of fun, but I don't just get to have the fun of catching all those salmon. I get to eat this thing too. I'm making this delicious cedar plank grilled salmon with a miso and lemongrass glaze that everyone's gonna love. So let's get started. I've got this cedar plank and you can buy these specifically for this purpose and it is really really dry and super light so the first thing you want to do is soak this in water for 30 minutes to an hour so that it doesn't just flame up on the grill. But soaking this presents its own unique problem because this thing is pretty long so what are you supposed to soak this thing in? I mean I can try and put it in here. Too long for that. I could put it on a baking sheet like this, but this is pretty shallow, so I think I've got a better idea. That'll do. Let's take a look at the ingredients for the glaze, and rather than measure these ingredients out, I'm really just going to eyeball this one depending on how much fish I'm cooking at that time. So. I'm going to start with some shiro miso. You could use the darker red miso and that'll have a little stronger flavor. I've got some mirin, some honey, fresh ginger, and one stock of fresh lemongrass. I'm just cooking for one today so I'm not going to need much of this glaze at all. So I'm only going to start with a tablespoon this time of that miso. Now I'll just stir in the mirror in here until I get it to the consistency I want, which is not going to be very thin because I want this to be kind of sticky and not run off of that fish as it's cooking. A little bit more. I bet that'll get it. So that was about two tablespoons of the mirin to my one tablespoon of miso, if you want to use that as a, a starting point. Now I'll add in the honey and I'll just taste this and stop when it's as sweet as I want. And I'm just going to start with about a teaspoon and whisk that in. And that right there is plenty sweet for me. It's already a little sweet from the mirin, but if you like it sweeter, go for it. Now I'll grate in the fresh ginger. It's not going to take very much of this. That's real strong stuff. And again, just give that a taste. I'm going to just put a tiny bit more of that in there. That'll do. And what I'm going to do here is to peel off a couple of the outside leaves. Those are pretty tough. Then I'll cut off the very tip and I'll cut a little section out of the base of this. I'm not going to need very much for this at all. So I've got plenty left over here. So then I'll peel away another couple layers and this inner part is going to be the tender part that you can chew nice and easily. But you're still going to want to cut this up very very fine. That'll do. 
I'm gonna go ahead and mix all of that in there. That's about a tablespoon of finely minced lemongrass. Just the tender bits. Check out that beautiful piece of fresh salmon. And now I'm just gonna cut a steak out of there that'll fit on that board. Oh man, look at that. Woo! And there we have one beautiful slab of the Pacific Northwest finest. You can wait to put the glaze on until right before you put this on the grill. But if you've got 15 or 20 minutes before you're gonna cook this, it is nice to put this on a little bit ahead of time so it has a little bit of marinating action and also kind of set up on that fish a little bit so i'm just gonna use my paintbrush and apply a pretty hefty coat of this glaze on here if you got a thinner piece of fish you might want to go easy on the glaze because it is really strongly flavored and now i want to pop this into the refrigerator for 15 20 minutes just to let that glaze kind of set up maybe get a little tacky on the fish in the meantime i'll go heat up the grill now i'll hit that with some fresh ground black pepper and if you really want to glaze this up you could sprinkle a little dusting of brown sugar on top of here too but now this can be popped into a 400 degree oven for 10 or 12 minutes depending on how you like it but i'm going to cook this using indirect heat on my gas grill so i've had the grill heating up for a while now so it is just about as hot as i can possibly get it so i'll place this over the center burner then i'll turn that burner off and close the lid let the heat from the outside two burners cook that through that way i don't risk catching the plank on fire and that's going to take 12 to 15 minutes in my grill Now let's see how we did, and serving this right on the plank is really the only way to go with something like this. Had I left the plank full length, I could put some nice steamed vegetables up on one end, maybe some smoked potatoes au gratin on the other, and that would be a dynamite presentation and a great meal. But I'm just having salmon today, so let's give this a shot. I'm gonna get a chunk from the belly, the fatty belly part, my favorite part. Oh yeah, check out that bite. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, yeah. That is dynamite. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. The miso and the honey and ginger give it that really familiar teriyaki kind of flavor. But that lemongrass gives it a really nice fresh pop. Oh man. Mmm. To be honest with you, I think the whole cedar plank thing is a little gimmicky. It doesn't really put a lot of cedar flavor in your salmon. I think you just kind of get the aroma of the cedar wood in the room and it does enhance it a little bit. But. You could throw this right on a baking sheet and it's gonna be great. So, get down to your local fish market or even better, I really hope you can get out there, catch yourself a mess of salmon, maybe get lucky and bring home a keeper, have the time of your life, and then make a meal to remember. Thanks for watching.